Well, I think part of the serendipitous timing is that all these nations are actually years in the making. And after that, we have to take into account the different orbits of the Earth and Mars around the Sun and launch at the time when the distance between Earth and Mars is the smallest. That makes for shorter journey times, that makes for less fuel burnt, and that makes for more efficient missions. So we are very fortunate to have these different missions coming now. HOPE, the United Arab Emirates mission right now, the Tianwen One uh, Chinese mission in a few days, and the Perseverance mission from NASA landing at the end of next week. Oh. And then later on today, uh, we're going to have the ExoMars Rosalind Franklin mission from the European Space Agency and Roscosmos in a few years. Uh, wow, the, uh, Mars is a busy place, uh, Philippe. Uh, let me move on to China. Clearly, this is a huge milestone for the United Arab Emirates, but equally important uh, for China. Entering Mars orbit, obviously a huge step. What comes after that? Entering Mars orbit is already a scientific and technical achievement by itself. The failure rate of Mars missions is very high, close to 50 percent, because of the very complex conditions getting all the way to Mars and sending signals there, getting signals back. The Tianwen mission is going to be very important because it actually sends a rover on the surface of a planet. And this rover is going to take samples, analyze them, look at the potential for water ice and how it can help future human exploration or settlements on the Red Planet. Philippe, when can we expect uh, this rover to land and on Mars and how complicated of a mission will it be to, to collect all the data you mentioned? We expect the rover to be there in a few days. Like any space mission, what the scientists want to check is that everything is working perfectly. So we can always expect a few days or a few weeks of tests of all the equipment to make sure it's all working perfectly uh, as it was planned. After that, this mission is going to send us data on a regular basis. The time it takes for radio waves to come back to Earth is 11 minutes. That's why it takes 11 minutes to send a signal back to the rover. This 20 minute delay is built into the mission and it's associated to the speed of light. And that's going to be one of the constraints there. The other constraints are going to be the harsh weather on Mars and the descent through the atmosphere. So it's very exciting to, to see this rover coming out soon and giving us more information about what's going on. So, Philippe, what is the fascination with Mars? Why Mars? Because it is one of the closest planets. It is uh, easier for potential life than Venus, which is a uh, very uh, rough, very hot, 450 degrees, with a runaway greenhouse effect. Mars is more looking like the Antarctic or some deserts. So it's going to be very cold, but we have uh, found evidence of water flows on the landscapes. We know there is buried water somewhere. And if there is any potential for life to have developed there, we would see that by missions on the ground.